Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're in our final stretch of looking at games of the great David Janowski. Um, this game that we're going to have a look at it's between Frank Marshall as white against David Janowski and this was played in um, uh, their second match, um, played in Biarritz in 1912 and Marshall won it fairly convincingly plus six minus two equals two. And uh, well, there was a, quite a bit of needle between those two during those career during their careers. So uh, I imagine that gave uh, Frank Marshall a great deal of satisfaction. But um, well, we've shown a few unlucky losses of uh, David Janowski so far. <coughs> but now it's time to show one of his very lucky wins. And uh, well, it was quite a fun game, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. So. D4, D5, C4, and E5. D takes E5, D4, and the Albin counter gambit was really pretty popular, you know, around the turn of the uh, 20th century, early 20th century. It, um, you know, some very good players played it. Um, uh, Tarash even played it against uh, David Janowski, you know, and uh, um, yeah, you know, Janowski played it a number of times himself. Everyone seemed to want to give it a go. Um, and yeah, there wasn't really much consensus on how to play against it. So knight f3, knight c6, and now knight bd2. This is actually one of the strongest moves in uh, in modern times. Uh, um, a3 is uh, um, is another strong idea. Also, uh, g3 is the old classical move. But knight bd2 is quite nice. Keeps things flexible. I mean, you can still go g3, but you can also play a quick knight b3, attacking that pawn on d4. So um, knight g7 is the modern way of playing it. Um, uh, Alexander Morozevich uh, played uh, uh, this way in a lot of games, but uh, it's basically pretty good for um, for white. Um, Janowski played uh, bishop g4. I think I've said it before. I, I feel I do feel that players of that uh, era had a mania for bringing out their queen's bishops early to g4. You know, whether it was in a Lopez or in uh, uh, or in an Albin. Um, and uh, Marshall played the move a3, which is actually also one of the uh, the engine's uh, main moves. Just uh, stopping anything coming to b4, also preparing something like b4, bishop b2. And now queen e7 was played by um, Yanovsky. And this is uh, yeah, a very interesting idea, just looking to, to capture on e5 quickly and, of course, to, uh, to castle queenside rapidly. You know, you're just... Uh, going to try and grab that pawn back, get yourself castle queenside quickly and claim that you've got counterplay. Um, so h3 was uh, was played by uh, Marshall, which is a good move. Takes on f3, knight f3 castles. And um, well, now the engines uh, um, really like the move bishop g5. Um, well, obviously hitting the queen with the rook behind it. So you have to play f6. E takes f6, g takes f6. And they consider that um, the black doesn't really have sufficient compensation for the pawn. But it is a little bit scary. I mean, uh, after bishop h4, for example, you can throw in d3, e3. And I mean, you know, you've got to be worried about stuff like bishop h6 or, or whatever. Um, you know, the engines feel that, uh, um, that white's always, you know, coping. But something like knight e5, queen b3, for example, takes, takes d2, king f1, queen f7. You know, we're coming round with queen h5, you know, hitting f3 and h4. Yeah, you know, stuff can happen. Stuff can go wrong there. It's, um, uh, you know, just in terms of uh, practical play and playing this, you know, as a, um, you know, as a, as a surprise in a practical game. Uh, not bad. Not too bad at all. Um, Marshall played uh, queen a4, just um, in a way, I guess, protecting this pawn by, uh, by attacking the pawn on a7. And... Uh, uh, Janowski played uh, king b8 just to protect that pawn on uh, on a7. And now Marshall played bishop g5. The engines think that bishop g5 earlier would have been better, um, quite a bit better in actual fact. They don't like uh, this queen on a4 and uh, well it is a little bit out of the way and when you consider that you know d3 might be happening you might want a, a little bit more protection around your king. Um, they, they preferred, the engines preferred something like g3 for example and then you just play uh, something like this and um, yeah, you know, just just try and uh, uh, develop quietly and claim you've got the two bishops. But it's not quite the same as the uh, as uh, bishop g5 a move earlier. So bishop g5 played, takes, and now actually the engines just think knight takes f6 in this position. And uh, yeah, you're just going to play h6 and uh, and g5, and um, yeah, just claim you've got compensation for the pawn. Not so stupid in actual fact. Um, yeah, castles uh, h6 takes takes g3 was. Uh, 
a stockfish against dragon but after d3 yeah this was uh, not looking so bad bishop g2 takes takes rook e1 bishop c5 and rook e8 and okay white's um you know a pawn up opposite color bishop uh, uh, position but um well you know the black king's quite safe the white king's uh, checkable you know uh, the engines thought that um that uh, the black would be able to um uh, to hold this somehow uh, it's not great great but it's not uh, so bad but Yanovsky played uh, nice and aggressively took on f6 and after bishop d2 played the move uh, bishop h6 which is quite interesting just um uh yeah i mean you're looking to play d3 and you want to have pressure and maybe you're going to take on d2 first and play uh and play uh, d3 and of course you know if uh, white takes on h6 your knight comes to h6 and then to f5 and again aims at the e3 square so quite a lot happening there really um, but Marshall played very coolly here. He played d3. And um, yeah, Janowski decided to go for it with uh, with d3 here. Um, but yeah, e3, queen e4. You know, it looks very, very aggressive because after bishop g2, you follow up with something like knight e5. You know, it looks uh, quite, uh, quite dangerous. But um, yeah, I mean, in actual fact, uh, you know, the engines just think this is nothing at all. And... Uh, <coughs> Queen d1 was the engine's favourite move, but yeah, you, you give them knight h4, and they're also thinking it's uh, plus three or plus four, really. Uh, there, there was another move, by the way. You could also play knight d4, which is uh, multiple pins, uh, but again, white has this move, knight h4, you know, and uh, um, well, I mean, you can play, you know, something like knight c2, but I think even queen takes c2 here would be uh, quite decent. And um, yeah, if you go back to e6, then um, uh, white just castles, and yeah, you know, again. This is not looking very good for uh, for black. Just uh, some sort of random pieces spread around somewhere, but nothing that's really going to cause white any problems. So knight e5 was played, knight h4, queen takes c4, and now rook c1. I mean, um, uh, yeah, the engines uh, you know want to play bishop c3 to uh, to hold the um, uh, the two bishops, but rook c1 is also <coughs> very strong. If uh, knight takes b2, we go rook b1, and b7 is hanging. And basically, you know, white's just got a very nice advantage. I mean, if you take on d2, my king takes on d2 and this d3 pawn is going. We've got this lovely f5 square for the knight. This bishop's just aiming nowhere. I mean, uh, black's just come horrifically out of the opening, really. And it doesn't get much better. I mean, uh, d5 was played. Knight f5, a6. Um, a4, just undermining that queen side. Bishop f8, undeveloping. But, you yeah, know, you've got to do something to get your uh, king side pieces developed. Uh, and now knight d4, aiming for uh, here and also undermining this one. <coughs> knight d2 was played, knight c6 check, just stopping the bishop from uh, coming out to b4. King c8, king takes d2, rook d6, takes, takes. I mean, here, um, uh, Marshall got both his rooks involved, playing rook a1 just allowing the other rook to come to uh, c1 did remind me a little bit of um of something that mark Dvoretsky said which is you know should never move your rooks like this you should always move them like this he had this uh, he, <laughs> this uh this uh movement uh, he said which his uh, pupils had uh, thought of and which was you know a very good way of remembering it and what he meant was uh, yeah this move rook c5 is better to allow rook a1 somehow you know you, you don't put a rook passive and then bring the other rook you put the rook, rook as active as possible and then move the other rook to the active position that's the uh, the basic idea but rook a1 is still very very strong here king d7 rook h c1 and uh yeah i mean uh, you can't really imagine white uh, ever losing this right white's in complete control rook a8 is coming in well rook a7 even but rook a8 if i can stretch that far so uh, knight e7 and now knight b8 check and uh, well uh, Janowski didn't dare put the king back into danger so he went to e6 and rook takes c7 happened yeah this knight on b8 is a little bit out of uh, play for now but uh, a couple of moves it'll be back there and then we'll be completely safe so knight d5 played um yeah rook b7 was uh, was was pretty sensible here but um uh yeah marshal took on d5 uh, rook takes d5 and now yeah again you know knight c6 seems uh, very natural stopping bishop b4 getting back to d4 as quickly as possible he played rook a6 check in this position 
Um, bishop d6 looks more natural, but we can go rook b7, you know, um, protect everything, and then this knight will get back to d4. But, um, yeah, Janowski played king f5, and now knight c6, and, you know, really, you, you're starting to think, well, nothing could ever go wrong for white in this position. Um, king e4, knight d4. And I think that's really the moment where you sort of, uh, you know, as a white player, you sort of... Uh, slightly switch off now and you say okay well you know that's it basically end of story completely won can just start relaxing now and um i don't know yeah i mean bishop b4 check kind of looks like the only move that you'd ever consider with uh, with black Air. chase the king back and um and then try and do something i mean you're you're a pawn down white's got control of all the open files so you can't activate your rooks and of course yeah there's stuff like rookie six check coming in the black king's in a little bit of danger but you know that that would seem to be kind of the way to um to do it the engines are looking at rook d6 f3 check quite clever king there i've got knight f5 check uh, king d5 and then takes king d6 knight b5 e4 knight d4 rook c4 knight c6 and you know we're gonna pick up this one pick up this one and just completely winning you know but um yeah, Janowski, I think, played a move, Rook E5, that must have just totally thrown Marshall. Um, because there's no re really logical explanation why White wouldn't have played the move that he wants to play, which is F3 check, chasing the king back so that you can win this pawn. Um, or deliver mate in 18 with Rook A C6, uh, with a threat of uh, Rook D7 check here. Um, so, yeah, there's no reason why that couldn't happen. But what Marshall did now was horrific, actually, because he played the move knight c6. And believe it or not, the engines are now giving 0 0.00 for uh, this position. I mean, it is a very weird move, knight c6. It's hard to understand why you'd want to do that. You know, you've brought your knight back to d4, and now you're, you're going to c6 away from there. But the idea that this could throw away... You know, mate in 18, you go from mate in 18 to 0 0.00 is, is quite amazing somehow. But of course, you know, these rooks are, are awfully placed in general now. Uh, the knight's blocking uh, this rook, uh, which had uh, access to the third rank to check the, uh, the black king. You know, this pawn is stopping rook a4 check and this rook's not doing anything at all. Um, but still, it's, it seems rather unfair. Rook f5 was um, Yanovsky's reply, which is actually quite strong. And we're threatening rook takes f2. So... Marshall played the move f4, which is always a little bit, uh, already a little bit irritating. You can't go f3 check anymore. And now rook c5. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, this, this, this knight on, um, on, uh, um, on c6 is pinned to the rook on c7. And um, black's threatening rook c2 check as well. So you can, I can imagine that Marshall maybe felt a, a, light, a light feeling of panic here. And uh, that probably didn't become much better when rook a8 rook c2 check king d1 king takes c3 was played and now i mean it's absolutely crucial there's only one move that um that uh, uh the white can play and it's rook e8 check you've got to chase the the black king away and then you can go rook cc8 and well you know somehow try and um uh try and win this um this piece somehow um the engines thought that you know after king g3 we go rook e d8 and we're going to play rook takes d3 here and um yeah after king f4 rook takes d3 um yeah if you go rook takes b2 rook d8 and uh well i mean black's <laughs> black's two pawns up now but uh it's just a little bit tricky for um for black to get his pieces free so the engines thought that white could hold this but yeah you know what an amazing turnaround already but marshall i don't know what he was thinking he played rook cc8 here and dunovsky played bishop d6 and after rook takes h8, well, Yanovsky played the move rook g2. Actually, slightly intriguing. Why not rook h2 there? What, what was the choice for rook g2? But that's good enough because we're threatening rook g1 checkmate. And if you go rook e8 check um, here, then um, bishop e5 simply blocks. And I don't know, knight e5, rook g1 is checkmate. Oh, my goodness. What a turnaround. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it's hard to know what um, what Marshall was thinking when he played this move knight c6. It doesn't really make any sense at all. But um, but still, incredibly cruel to go from such a winning position, mate in 18, after, uh, after f3 check, uh, to 0 0.00 after knight c6. And, uh, well, I, I guess that the, the panic set in after these moves. And, uh, yeah, 
That was that was it for Marshall. Despite that, he managed to win the match plus six minus two equals two against his uh, his um, um, not always uh, very sporting rival. And uh, yeah, so that was still a good match victory for him. But uh, yeah, very lucky escape for uh, David Yanovsky. But uh, well, you know, Yanovsky played so riskily. Um, some of these things did actually happen. We saw the game against Leonard, of course, uh, earlier. You know where, um, yeah, you know, Yanovsky just kept on hitting, kept on sacking pieces, kept on going forwards, and uh, well, sometimes things work out for you when uh, when that happens. But a very lucky game indeed. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that one. We've uh, got two more games of Yanovsky, and the final one is an absolute crazy one. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy that one. And the next one is also going to be very interesting as well. So do stay tuned to the channel. Give a like, subscribe to the channel. Take a look at my new book, Re-Engineering the Chess Classics. I'm sure you'll love it. And otherwise, thanks for watching and see you at the next video.